Who's wearing a bit of the green tonight to celebrate sobering up from St. Patty's Day? Or as I like to call it, Irish amateur drinking night because I drink here on Mondays. That's true. It is, it is. I, uh, I have a trivia thing. A lot of, we were talking earlier. Uh, people ask me all sorts of questions. I give you guys a chance to take pot shots at me. But I realized I never had a way to work this in. It's a fun trivia thing about me that you can use against me later. I once spent roughly the first half of my adult life in a little room with no windows all by myself. It is at this point that usually people assume I was a mental patient. Looking at me now, fair guess, but actually I was a commercial artist and it was a studio which was sort of a, a prison of my own making. I would sit in there with my tools laid out so and my materials and everything all set just right and other artists would come by and go, wow, you are anal retentive. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be like that. Okay, I'm going to go for the monologue. I'm, a, I'm backing off God as a heckler. You see this? You guys have got me way too brave. So, that said, I escaped, I escaped the pseudo-cubicle. And, um, but, but back then I was creating things and I would put all my energy into doing something and I thought it was great because I would sit there and I'd get all set up and I'd be like, and nothing would happen. Nothing in my little perfect room with all my materials just so, my stuff, my cup of coffee. This sucks. <laughs> and so I would finally go, I would finally go out to the pub which is why I've turned my life around and I pretty much start there now. And I would commiserate with my other artist friends. And we, I, I don't know, I love I mean, TV, music, pop culture, I'm all for it. I mean, obviously, look at this mess. But if you think about it, artists, creative types, you guys know this, I'm preaching to the choir here. When we get together, the only reason we're talking about TV is because it somehow relates to our greater vision, our idea, our thing, Yeah. And so I'm, I'm sitting here going, yeah, oh, and someone, one of my friends had this like Eiffel Tower of an idea. It's just gi gigantic, ridiculous, but it wouldn't stay upright. And I'm like, stick a little cornerstone under right here. And he goes, oh, you're a genius. And I'm like, no, I'm staring at the obvious in the face and I can fix that. And I, and, but he cheered me on and he went on to some great success. And I went back to my studio and I was like, tink, 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 hey, I'm really fired up and I can get some stuff done. And this is great, this is good. And I would slowly peter out. I would run out of steam. And... As I kept trying to do this, I go back up to the pub, not. And eventually, I got to the point where I kind of felt stupid because it seemed like the only really good ideas I was having was going out and fixing other people's problems. I go out there and go, oh, here's the thing you could do this, and another Eiffel Tower went up. I was getting kind of frustrated with that. I eventually led to me running away from that studio constantly and stumbling into a new hobby that turned into performance, which sort of led me to standing up here in these pants. And you're welcome. Nothing led to those pants. Not, nothing led to these pants. Stories you would not believe. But I'm, I'm going to arc gently back towards the point. I hope so, because otherwise I wrote that first half for nothing. It's <laughs> okay, YouTube, sometimes you miss this. He said you can't see the point because of the pants. I, I thought it was a good one, so I wanted to make sure that went on camera. Okay, so... Coming back to it now, I finally realized maybe I'm not so stupid. I'm, I was, I'm, maybe I was like a social genius instead of a, a, a sitting in my room all by myself trying to, of course it doesn't work. Sitting in a little room by yourself, I will not come out till I'm a genius or need a sandwich. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Exactly. And I needed to commune with some friends and I needed to interact. One of the great fears that is a holdover from my art life was Never, don't shush him, it happens. It's okay, it's live theater. But shh, seriously, I'm trying to tell a story. Okay. One of the holdovers was, you know, that whole thing is those who do, those who can do, and those who can't. I hate that because you cannot teach anything you don't know. I, 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 but it took me a long time to get to that. It, it took me a long time to understand it because I had to get to where I actually knew something. But last weekend, you know, I was talking about the fact that at Alcon, we had taught all of these workshops. And I realized I had let go of my skill and it didn't matter 
You know, I was like, I was, contact juggling was like my secret weapon. No one else was doing it. And I was teaching people how to do this. I was like, ooh, let go of the secret weapon. All that's left is me. Of course, now I'm sitting here under the watchful eyes of the rageful thunder gods. <laughs> they are displeased, but I, there's nothing. I'm, it's just me, and I'm still here, and so that worked out, and I like that idea. And I started thinking, well, hey, if I, if I share my skills, I get better at it, someone better at me than me at something. That's my mentor, someone lesser than me or not quite up to that speed. Well, maybe they're my student. I've got to show them something so I can move forward. And by learning it, teaching it to them, I'm going to learn something. It was a good experience. But the kicker on all of this was it got me out of that little room with no windows where I was trying to be great and it wasn't working. I got outside of Alcon, and there was a, a workshop. They had to move us to another room. So I'm in this, other, in this hallway, and I'm trying to warm up because there's still a workshop wrapping up. And I'm trying to, I don't know about you, but I need 20 minutes before my body will do anything. I, and finally, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm good to go. And I'm, I'm outside just playing and just juggling and doing my thing. And these two little kids walk up on me. And they look like this. And, and she grabs mom's hand and says, mommy, and I haven't heard this word in a really long time. I say, mommy, that's real magic. And she walked off talking about magic with her mom. And I thought to myself, I got out of my studio and maybe someday she's going to build a big Eiffel Tower of an idea. And maybe, just maybe, because I wasn't hiding and I was collaborating and sharing, I might have stuck something up that helped her build on it. I think that's what this event is all about. And it is like the coolest part of getting after a whole weekend of teaching to come back up here and share that story with you here at the open stage. And after a whole weekend of really tough crowds, it is exciting to be back with a room full of people who cheer when you talk. Because <laughs> drunk convention people do not cheer. It's true. I don't care, but it is true. They do wave steampunk guns around, which was pretty awesome. There's a couple of people in the back who have not been to a convention, have no idea what I'm talking about, are like... It probably is. I'm way more fascinating if I'm half Enigma and half these pants.